All right, welcome back. Now our GMC tweet of the night, and this tweet from Daily Loud Pony saying Tua told to retire by CTE expert and famous neurologist, neuropathologist Bennett Amalu. Remember him? He was in concussion, um, so he's saying that he should retire, being stretched off the field with severe concussion. I mean, I think he has to, um, you know, take lengthy time off. I mean, obviously, I'm not a doctor, Pony, uh, but what you saw there. You know, he needs to get right before he can come back out into the field. Well, and I think we're probably going to see Teddy Bridgewater when the Steelers go to Miami uh, in a few weeks. You know, they've got here this dawning schedule, but there are some things that are a little bit different now with not only Kenny Pickett going in, but we know Watt will probably come back against Tampa. We know that Brady's having issues off the field. We'll see if that affects him. Richie, I don't mean to bring this up to try to put you in a bad mood or anything, but let's just be honest. We've all had bad breakups before. Relationships, whether it's divorce or a long-term girlfriend, uh, you're kidding yourself if you don't think that that affects you at work. Some people get obsessed with work and try to use it as an outlet to block everything out, but we're all human. Even Tom Brady at 45, that's not an easy thing to do. So we don't know what mindset he's going to be in when he comes here in a couple of weeks. That can't be easy, Richie, uh, yeah. that everybody in the world knows that he's separating from his wife. There's no doubt it affects you in every way possible. You're talking about kids. You're thinking about where the kids are going to be. Yeah. Are they going to be with you from now on? You're thinking about money. I mean, obviously, he has a lot of money, and no matter how much money he loses, he's going to be fine. But you're thinking about, you know, how much are you giving away? Who's getting the house? And there's so many things at play here that it's on there's your distractions. mind. Other than, yes, other than work. So it definitely is, I think, a reason for the way he's playing right now and will continue to play until this is finalized. And I don't know um, if, if I think it'll affect him the entire year. Um, that's just me personal. Yeah. Now, just getting Fair back point. to getting back to the Steelers, um, you know, my read on the room uh, has a lot to do with a lot of my questions, to Deontay Johnson in those interviews and the answers that he gives you. Uh, and, and it seems like he gives you like when, when, when that was my read on Kenny Pickett, when he gave that answer that he has swag, and he did, it, he did it with me in the preseason game, too, um, talking about Kenny Pickett. You know, he was, he's, he's giving more uh, praise for Pickett than he did with Mitch Trubisky. Uh, and I feel like even though a lot of these guys give that coach speak, there's, Deontay Johnson really doesn't sometimes. And he kind of tells you the way he's feeling or the way he thinks Well, he it said is. it's a rebuilding year, Richie. Yeah, well, that was my he question. Said yeah, he said this is not a me. championship year. Yeah, he said it to right. me. exactly. That was um, a good job so, by you. So what I'm saying is, um, you know, I, I think these guys are excited. You could feel, even though they lost and, and they were down about it, but you could feel that there's some optimism and hope that they're going to score points on offense. Well, I think if you're a guy that catches the ball for a living, you like this move because Pickett is more aggressive. I think Trubisky liked to say things like aggressive, but it never carried over into the game unless it was a two-minute drill or like the play in Cincinnati, there was a penalty and there were no repercussions for throwing an interception. I think Trubisky was under the impression, and rightfully so, that as long as he didn't turn the ball over, the job was his. Well, yeah. when you're only scoring three points in the second half in Cleveland, and you're losing to the New York Jets at home at halftime with no points, guess what? It doesn't matter how many interceptions you throw. It doesn't matter how many things are not your fault. The, the result is not good enough. So a change, if you're Fryermuth, Johnson, Claypool, who can't catch the ball, by the way, can't catch a 50-50 ball to save his life, George Pickens, these guys, even Najee has been un... Richie, he caught 70 footballs last year. He hasn't been involved in the passing game whatsoever. He's been invisible as a wide receiver for them. Extra ways to get him involved in the offense. And I think those guys, they know it when they see it, that Pickett has the confidence to throw him the ball. And if it doesn't work out, it's not going to be in his head the next time he takes the field. He's going to want to go right back to those guys the same way Ben used to do that after a bad play. All right, let's go to our number one call of the night. It's Big Al and Robinson. How you doing, Big Al? Big Al. Hey, hey, hey Pony, I have to tell you something. You, you, you called a long time ago, 64 years I've been going to game. And I want to know if he can be able to audible. And, Rich, I got a comment for you, and I respect you. You weren't even born when I was doing this. You made a comment the other night that Todman left to think he'd get a job in 10 minutes. Based on what? 3 and 11? He had A.B., Le'Veon Bell, and Rutherford. He couldn't win a Super Bowl. 
He's been horrible. Why don't you guys take a poll about the fans in Pittsburgh? He does not deserve a lifetime contract in the Roonies. If anybody should have got it, it should have been Noel. But I disagree with him getting a job. Would you hire a guy 3-11? But three point, he's, got, he's got a gift in Cincinnati. I, I, Big Al, I see your point. What he's done in the playoffs, not good lately. Uh, he has two Super Bowls. But what he's done um, the regular season with some mediocre teams at times has been impressive. Look, Pony, I was just saying that because I think he would get hired uh, as soon as he got off the phone with the Roonies if they fired him. Well, I don't. let me just say this, though. I don't think that's a good enough reason to keep somebody as coach. Like... Andy Reid got fired in Philadelphia and was hired right away from Kansas City. And look, that worked out for Kansas City. They won a Super Bowl. But it also worked out for Philadelphia because the next guy that went in there, Doug Peterson, won a Super Bowl too. Now he's in Jacksonville. They've got another guy as their head coach, Richie, and they're the last undefeated team in the NFL. So it's not as if you fire a guy and if you don't have a replacement or if he's coveted by other teams, your franchise is screwed. Uh, Tomlin, the results lately have not been great. He's in a position right now, I think, where the biggest thing that matters to him moving forward is the development of his quarterback. The defense obviously has to get better. They've got so much money invested in that. But if they come out of this season and Pickett plays great over the next 13 games, Richie, that's going to buy Tomlin, I think, a lot of time, obviously with the organization who never fires a coach, but probably even some with fans. Because you got to give Tomlin, hey, I rip Tomlin when he gets a draft pick wrong. If Pickett's great, and I think he will be, I'll have to give him credit for getting it right. So I think the big question, we're going to go Mike and Beaver here. Hey, Mike, how you doing? But the big question is, before we take the call, is does it buy Matt Canada anytime? Mike, what's up? No, probably hey, not. Hey, Richie. Hey, Pony. Um, hey, man. I want to know if you could add to the lore, if you have any Steelers inside, um, any info on – I saw right before halftime, Tomlin looked at Pickett and asked him, it looked like he asked him if he was ready to go. And Pickett grabbed his helmet and he said, this is my effing team. And then halftime, and they went into the locker room. I was wondering if you guys heard that or I saw didn't, that. I, I didn't see that. I, I mean, talking to those guys, no one knew until they got into the locker room at halftime, right? That's what I was told. So... Well, didn't a photographer tip you guys off that he was going in? Isn't there some story there? What's I the story told, there? That you, I was told uh, at the end of the first half, like towards the, the beginning of the halftime, that he was going to go in. Um, so I, I'm sure that hmm. he might have said something on the way out. I don't know the exact wording of it, but I know Mitch was told at halftime that he yeah. said, what, KP's going in. Is that how he said it? So... All right, let's and go. let me tell you, say one more thing on that. If they had started picking in that game and gave them all week to get ready, 10 days, in fact, they beat the Jets. Yeah, I, I mean, I, they should have won that game. Um, I, I feel like that's on the defense, that game at least. Let's go out to Herb and Renfro. How you doing, Herb? Hi, Herb. Hi, Richie and Andrew. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, um, sure, man. I think, Mike, I think Mike Tomlin is a good coach, but one of his weaknesses is surrounding himself with great young assistant coaches. He's inherited some good coaches from Bill Cowher's staff, but Cowher's coaching tree had Chan Gailey, Dom Capers, Malarkey, yeah. Marvin Lewis, Bruce Aarons, all going to head coaches. My you know, Herb, we've been saying this for a long time. I mean, who does Tomlin really have that went on to bigger and better things? Um, that, that's, that's been the big, the big question, Pony. Yeah, and yeah, the last two offensive coordinators – the way they've been hired, Figner because he was buddy-buddy with Ben and Tomlin in Canada because I think he was buddy-buddy with Tomlin from his uh, kids' uh, recruitment at Maryland, which, like, honestly, there's no other reasonable explanation for Canada being this team's offensive coordinator because he had such a paper-thin resume while he was at Pitt yeah, getting college football. Only held jobs basically one year, got fired at LSU, taking that yep. big job after one year. All right, got to take a break. Back to wrap things up coming up next. Stay right there.